Hey guys, how are you doing? Here is a much awaited video. Spousal Sponsorship Program of Canada. So many of you were requesting me to make this video. Your wish is my command. So in this video, I'll tell you about the overview of this program so that you understand it better. I'll tell you about the eligibility requirements. I'll tell you about the overall process. I'll tell you about the processing time, about those documents that you need to submit and also about the total cost involved. This is a long and a bit confusing process. So however, I will share many details with you today in this video, but it would not be possible to give every tiny bit of information in just one video. So I am starting this new video series about spousal sponsorship program. The next video would be in detail about the step-by-step -step process, then about arranging the documents, about the FAQs, about the open work permit, uh, etc, etc. These videos would be so descriptive that would allow you to complete the process on your own, helping you save tons of money that you would spend on consultants. So let's get started with the first video. Hey guys, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos. Okay, so let's get started with the overview. So what is it about? So the Spousal Sponsorship Program is basically a subsection of the Family Class Immigration category. You would hear this word many times in your forms. Under this program, a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident may sponsor your spouse or dependent child for the Canadian PR. Okay, we'll talk about this in detail going further in this video. For now, let's just talk about the different types that are there. So basically, there are two types only. The first one is the Inland Spousal Sponsorship and the second one is the Outland. Inland Sponsorship is when the couple is together in Canada and the foreign spouse or the common law partner has temporary status in Canada, either as a worker, maybe a student or a visitor. The person being sponsored may be eligible for an open work permit, allowing him or her to work for an employer in Canada while the sponsorship application is in process. An outland application is generally pursued when the sponsored partner is living outside of Canada. So if you're living in India, uh, Pakistan, you know, UAE, wherever, outside of Canada, maybe US even, then you would go for the outland spousal sponsorship. Unlike the inland sponsorship applicants, outland applicants cannot apply for an open work permit. Okay, now let's talk about the application type. If you came to Canada through the Express Entry Program, or maybe uh, through a visitor visa, then you must have seen that the process is actually on computer, it's online. But this is unfortunately not an online application yet. In future, they would definitely move on to the online system. But until now, this is a paper-based application. And that is the reason why it is actually really slow. So basically, you actually need to collect all those documents, fill up all those forms and send them to Canada to a particular location. Okay, now let's talk about the eligibility. First of all, let's talk about the eligibility for the sponsor. So to be a sponsor, you must at least be 18 years old. You must be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident of Canada. However, if you're a Canadian citizen living outside of Canada, you must show that you plan to live in Canada when the persons you want to sponsor become the permanent residents. Also, if you can't sponsor someone if you're a permanent resident living outside of Canada. So if you think that you will apply for the Canadian PR alone without your spouse, you will do the soft landing, go back, apply for your spouse and then come back to Canada with your spouse. That won't be possible because if you become a permanent resident, then you should be living in Canada then only you can apply the PR of your spouse. Okay, the next point. You're able to prove that you are not receiving social assistance for reasons other than disability. And also the last point is very important. You can provide for the basic needs of any persons you want to sponsor. Now you must have seen that the eligibility does not say that you should have a job. But yes, your case would be even stronger if you have a job in Canada. When you land, you get a job for yourself. Maybe you get the offer letter, you join and then you can apply. Maybe you get a couple of salary slips, you attach them in the documents. That would strengthen your case a lot. We will talk about the documents going further. Okay, now let's talk about who can be sponsored. So first of all, 
as the name suggests your spouse they can be of either sex canada does allow same sex marriages as well if you're a spouse you can be legally married to you at least 18 years of age uh, so that is all the basic criteria even if you are not married you can apply for the pr for your common law partner and your conjugal partner what is the definition of a common law partner and conjugal partner i won't get into too much detail you can find the definition online on the official website of government of canada you can also apply for the pr of your dependent children children qualifies as dependents if they meet the basic requirements that they're under 22 years of age and they're not married children 22 years or older can be eligible if they meet certain requirements but i know that most of my viewers won't be of that age group who would have uh, children more than 22 years of age so i won't get into that detail okay now the processing times processing time is actually one year 12 months i know it's too long it's way too long and that's the reason why it is actually difficult or actually the permanent residents uh, who are there in canada and then they get married to get the pr it takes one year and for that complete one year you actually need to stay away from your spouse if you are applying through an outland sponsorship program however having said that these are the processing times on records but i've seen many of my friends many of my colleagues actually getting the pr for their spouses uh, in around 4 uh, to 8 months time you know it may vary it may take 6 months it may take 8 months 10 months whatever but the maximum processing time is generally said to be one year so you should be prepared for that one year time okay now the cost to sponsor a spouse it would cost you 1040 canadian dollars or a child it would cost you around 150 canadian dollars additional but this cost does not involve the biometrics it does not involve the medicals it does not involve uh, the money you pay for getting the police clearance certificate it does not involve the postal charges so there are a lot of other charges as well i will try to make another video on the total cost of applying the pr through this process okay now let's talk about the list of documents your exact document requirements will depend on your situation there is an ircc tool that can be used to download an application kit and document checklist personalized to fit your details i'll talk about it in detail in the next video where i'll tell you in a very descriptive manner about the list of documents which are which documents are to be used and which are not to be used but today in this video let me give you a brief idea of which all documents are required the documents are required for both the sponsor and the person who's getting sponsored or the spouse now the good thing is that you don't need an ielts or a language proficiency test and also you don't need an eca which we generally get it done through wes so that is not required for your spouse now let's talk about the documents which are required now you need to fill a lot of mandatory immigration forms from ircc there they would ask you tons of questions about the sponsor about the spouse how did you meet about the family background how did your marriage happen how many people attended the marriage how did you first meet i would suggest you would need around 2 weeks time to fill those forms Okay now talking about the second point which is proof of identity now both the sponsor and the spouse needs to give their documents for proof of identity you need to give all the pages of your passport you need to give uh, any other documents like your national identity card if the sponsor is a permanent resident then he or she needs to give the permanent resident card and if he or she is a citizen then the passport mind it we need to submit only the photocopies and they need not be notarized Also for the proof of identity the birth certificate of the spouse might be mandatory but it might depend from one situation to the other Okay talking of the proof of status in Canada if it's an inland sponsorship then you would need to submit the photocopy of your visa so it might be a work visa it might be the study visa it might be a visitor visa you need to submit that as well After that the police clearance certificate you need to submit the police clearance certificate of any country where you have resided for more than 6 months in the past 10 years then the medical examination is also required however you can get it done later on after icc asks you after you submit the complete application package then 
you need the proof of relationship. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. You need to submit a lot of documents for your proof of relationship. First of all, the very mandatory one is the marriage certificate. Then you need to submit 20 photographs at the back of which you need to write when and where they were taken. These photographs can be from your early relationships. If you had a love marriage, it can be the photographs of uh, different wedding functions. So we know that in India, there are so many wedding functions. So you should give the photographs from that wedding function. Then maybe from your honeymoon, maybe from some other important days of your life. So 20 photographs maximum. Then to prove your relationship, you can give the screenshots of your chats from WhatsApp, from Facebook Messenger. You can also give the screenshots of your social media accounts declaring your marriage. You can also give the receipts of the online gifts that you might have sent to each other. Any joint bank account if, if you have, that would be very helpful. Also, you would need the testimonials from some of your friends and uh, relatives that they attended your marriage and they really enjoyed that marriage, something like that. I will talk about in detail in the video that I would make specifically for the documents. If there's any uh, monetary transaction uh, from the sponsor to the spouse, then that is also a very helping document. For those in Canada, you can approve it through your rent agreement that you're living in the same building. Maybe you have a joint account here. Maybe you can prove it through the insurance. If uh, both your names are there in the car insurance or the home insurance, you can prove your relationship. Basically, from all these documents that I told you, we just need to convince the immigration officer that the marriage was a legal marriage it was a valid marriage and uh, it was not a marriage for the sake of getting the permanent residency okay after that if there was any previous relationships like you ma got married earlier and then you got divorced then you sh also should furnish those documents as well apart from that you need to furnish the proof of payment so you need to do the payment online and then place the print of the receipt in that application package so overall it would come up to be a big application package a very heavy one and this would all be on papers you need to send them across at a particular location in canada through the trusted courier service okay now when we have talked about the documents now let's talk about the process i've divided the complete process into five simple steps the first one would be determining your eligibility so you should be able to determine that if you're eligible to sponsor so this one would be a pretty easy one the second one is access your personalized document list i would make a detailed video about this how you can actually get the personalized document list how you can use the ircc tool to get that personalized checklist okay now the third one and the most important one gather and prepare all necessary forms and supporting documents now as i told you in this third step there are so many forms and so much information that they ask for it would take you at least two weeks to fill all those forms correctly and gathering the documents that might take some more time so overall you should say that you would need around one month time to complete that application package now the fourth one is very important again double checking everything because it is very important that you don't leave even a single signature you don't leave a single document you don't leave a single form if you leave a form maybe if you leave a single signature over there they will return the application package back to you it comes back to you you do the necessary changes and you send it back straight away one to two months are lost so definitely you don't want to do that so double check everything or maybe i would say try getting it checked with someone else just to be double sure okay now the last step would be submitting your application for processing so there are two different addresses one in sydney nova scotia for the outland applicants and one in mississauga ontario for the inland applicants so those people needs to send their application package complete application package it would be a big bundle of the documents to those locations this would be followed by the medical examination of the spouse and the children and the biometrics as well so in a nutshell it would be a long process and it would take a lot of effort for you to complete that application package and it would take a lot of time to understand the process complete the application package send it across and obviously after that it would be a wait of six months to 12 months so thank you guys that was all the information that i wanted to share through the first video of this video series i would be making more videos to make it more clear for you guys so that it would be very easy for you to complete that application package and send it across.
Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the like button. And yes, if you have any feedback or questions, put it down in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video.